This is how Ayurveda is teaching us to concentrate. What meditation does is teaching us how to control our consciousness. Because most of the time we're living life thinking, well, these thoughts just do nothing. They just come and go. And then it's like the river take us right and left, but we don't have the paddle in our boat. We're not in control of our life. It just drifts us whatever direction it wants to. It better say you're behind the wheel, but you're starting to fall asleep and the car starts to bump into different edges of the highway. The same thing, you go to the gym and you work out and then you're in control of your body and how you want your body to be. The same thing our brain, our mind works. And so today we're going to talk about this methodology called DAISY. And in DAISY, this is how we do it. So imagine that this is the center of the DAISY. And when we start meditating, we're starting to feel, oh, I need to cook, I need to clean, I need to go to grocery shopping, I need to then pick up my kids and then boom you realize that you're drifting away you're drifting away from meditation and meditation let's say hypothetically that you're doing affirmation i wish everyone happiness i wish everyone happiness uh, you're saying i wish everyone happiness and then you're drifting away you realize that you are drifting away and then you start shifting back so when you're going away from the center from affirmation or meditation or prayer you gotta consciously catch yourself that you are not present you are not present in this moment the same way you're not present in life because most of the time we're not present we're in our head and the moment you're starting to come back you actually link willpower so going here you need consciousness consciousness that you're realizing that you are not present that you are asleep because sometimes I've noticed in the past, I would do either prayer or meditation, but I would be like dead asleep. I'm like, okay, I'm reading, I'm reading, but I'm a dead sleep. I'm not alive. And that's how we're sometimes asleep in our life. But in coming back into the center, we got to use our willpower. Okay, I realize I'm not present. I'm asleep. And then like, what am I doing? Oh, I'm wishing everyone happiness. And you're back in a daisy. And so this is what happens in the meditation the more you catch yourself going away from the center and then you catching yourself and using the willpower to come back and in the beginning you will feel like this has happened and a lot but then eventually what starts to happen those pedals going to become smaller you're going to start catching yourself faster that's how we train our mind and then the goal is get to the point where this daisy becomes very small where you catch yourself in a second and why we need the meditation is to start practicing our mind to coming back faster to the center because when we're concentrating for example you decided to cook or organize your house and then 10 minutes later you're on a facebook or you're watching a movie or you're watching tv series that means you're way away from your daisy right but the moment you caught yourself oh i'm actually losing my concentration on what i'm doing and you're using the willpower to come back to organize clean or whatever that you're doing you're again practicing the muscle our brain has a muscle to come back to what you've been doing and so you're again behind the wheel questions my friends so consciousness, conscious thought that you're away and willpower to come back. Conscious thought that I am asleep, I am not present and willpower to come back. And this is the methodology of how to be present. And then we're focusing and we're concentrating and we're present. We're present in life and not our thoughts taking us away anywhere it wants to. Also psychologically, probably Anna knows this, when we have negative 60 thoughts, on the average, negative to 60 thoughts that were not even present that are there. They're turning into the feeling. And the feeling is could be anxiety, could be tired, could be stressed, could be angry, angry, could be frustrated because those thoughts are in the background. And then the question, what do you do with those thoughts when they're in the background? When they're already there? Become aware of what they are. So you and if you already know that they are already there, the best thing to do is if you feel you're already anxious or stressed or overwhelmed, 
is to write them down. Sit down and write them down until they shift to the positive ones. This is the fastest way to clear your mind. But while you're in the process of meditation, your job is to catch as fast as you can, oh, you drift it away and you come back and you come back. But throughout the day, we usually say a minimum of 250 thoughts, minimum in one hour. And most of the time, it's not positive thoughts. If we're stressed and if we're running a life busy, right? Example, I always recommend for people to start meditation with simple one affirmation. So the center of the daisy, I wish everyone happiness. I wish everyone happiness. And the moment you say, I need to do laundry, you're not in the center, you're drifting away. I need to cook, you're drifting away. I need to do something else. So it's the affirmation. Yes, or for example, you're praying to God. That is the center. Or if your meditation, your silence, or you're doing om, m mm, is your sound. This is the center. And that's how you practice. Really good question. How you practice to be in the center. Now, in meditation, what also happens, we get to the space of the stagnation. Sleepiness is one way of feeling that you're not actually achieving anything. And the other way that you know that you're also stagnant in meditation is you have a lot of thoughts. Sometimes you get into this high and you feel wonderful and then you get to the point after six or eight months where you have so many thoughts and you're thinking, my God, nothing is working. Actually, that's when you're on the verge of having a breakthrough. Because when you have a lot of those thoughts, the programs that have been suppressed in you are now starting to get activated. And the mantra, let's say, I wish you happiness, is showing you where you're struggling. And it's starting to bombard you with a lot of thoughts. And if in that moment you quit, you won't be able to overcome that. But if you continue doing mantra meditation, let's say, I wish you happiness, it's a matter of days or weeks you will be able to overcome something big. But again, if some of you are already doing meditation, you can tell me what you're struggling with so I can answer directly what you're facing. Because most of the time it's the sleepiness or a lot of thoughts. Is that tired? Very good question. By the way, one of the other things in meditation we gotta achieve. First of all, when you sit in meditation like this or like this, uh, and there's three positions in meditation, how we're sitting. And most of the people don't actually know how to meditate correctly. You're meditating either on your butt because you have kids and then you're excused. But if you don't have kids or serious chronic pains, you're actually supposed to meditate on your knees, butt down okay, or better, butt up. Mm -hmm. And then the last position for meditation is standing up. And these are the four positions of the meditation. And now let's repeat together. I wish everyone happiness. I wish everyone happiness. I wish everyone happiness. I wish everyone happiness 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 I wish everyone happiness. I wish everyone happiness. I wish everyone happiness. I wish everyone happiness. I wish everyone happiness I wish 
everyone happiness. I wish everyone happiness. I wish everyone happiness. I wish everyone happiness. I wish everyone happiness. I wish everyone happiness. I wish everyone happiness. I wish everyone happiness. I wish everyone happiness. I wish everyone happiness. I wish everyone happiness. I wish everyone happiness. I wish everyone happiness. I wish everyone happiness. I wish everyone happiness. Make sure you speak out loud. I wish everyone happiness. Try to do it so loud that you feel confidence in your soul and your heart. I wish everyone happiness. Wish everyone happiness. I wish everyone happiness. I wish everyone happiness. I wish everyone happiness. Namaste, my friends.